Hi, I'm Chris Fleming, here with Starbase Martinsburg, located at the 167th Airlift Wing in Martinsburg, West Virginia. We are about to take our virtual community tour on a C-17 to see what their job is and how they use technology in an everyday moment. Here we have... I'm uh, Jared Shank. I've been a pilot with the West Virginia Air National Guard for about 12 years. I've been flying the C-17 for the last five. I'm Tristan Rowland, a uh, load master for the C-17 at the West Virginia Air National Guard, and I've been here for about three years. I'm Thomas Blaine. I'm a load master here at the 167th. Uh, I've been doing this for about three years now. All right, so let's take a step up on the plane and see what it's all about. So what are you guys doing with the iPads? Uh, so our iPads are our electronic flight books. Um, the Air Force is shifting away from paper publications. Um, these are a lot easier to use uh, in most scenarios. We walk into the office in the morning before a flight and we're actually able to update the publications, make sure we have the most up-to-date information. Um, there's no sorting through paper. Uh, it's a lot easier, uh, quicker for us to do. Um, I have a checklist opened up here, it's the interior safety inspection. Uh, so basically it's, a, um, it's one of the first checklists that we run when we get to the aircraft. Basically we're just ensuring that, um, we're, we're getting the airplane started up if you will, um, and we're ensuring that all the systems are working correctly. Um, And the big part of this checklist is to make sure that all the emergency systems are working that way if we do have an emergency on the ground that the airplane is going to let us know so we can evacuate the aircraft get everybody off. So when I watch movies and they're doing a checklist and they're doing it with a pen and clipboard, those are the old days, right? That's correct. We still have them. We, we carry the, the paper checklist in a mission trip kit that we have. That way, we ha still have the option, but. Wax fail, 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 wax fail. Wax fail, wax fail. So what are you testing? Uh, this is the electrical uh, panel right here. Um, basically we're just making sure that when uh, the electrical system is set to a specific configuration that certain things are happening. They call them the emergency buses. So they're, they're making sure that whenever the battery is on and there's no other electrical power applied to the aircraft that the proper uh, emergency buses are working. So if we have if the engines all flame out and we lose all our generators, the battery is supposed to power six buses by itself that can still help us fly the aircraft and get on the ground. Now I see a lot of duplicates of instruments here. So when we have four buttons, there's a lot of fours, a lot of fours, a lot of fours, like four of everything. So why is there four of, of the same thing? Well, we have four engines. Okay, so uh, one for each engine. Pretty much, yep. So it's not like my car where, you know, I, I, I have one engine to keep an eye on. You have four engines you have to maintain. Yeah, and uh, on every airplane, every system has um, second, third, uh, Obviously, this airplane has four backups, um, so essentially we have to lose four systems for us to be in a really bad position. Uh, we can lose one engine, and the airplane will still not operate fairly normally. Um, two systems we're starting to lose some, um, starting to lose some important stuff. If we lose three, now we're like we gotta get on the ground quick. Um, so, but you have you still have enough power to 
be able to maneuver. On two engines, yes. yes. If we get on the one engine, it would it would be very difficult depending on our weight. So that's a lot to keep an eye on. It is. Yes. Yeah. And the airplanes are very smart nowadays, and they tell us a lot of stuff. That they they will tell us if something's wrong, and we so we have this checklist all on those iPads right there that those guys have. Um, has checklists and emergency procedures for us to run depending on what what is going wrong. Now we, I see a lot of analog and some digital. So the purpose of the analog when now you're up to digital? Yeah. So the, the analog, most all the analog stuff is, is backups. Um, they're all standby instruments, and they are designed to operate with minimal power. All the the uh, avionic stuff, the glass. Um, displays and stuff you see up there require a lot more power. So if we get down in a situation where we only have, we're operating on just the battery, all we have are those analog instruments. They require much less power um, and can operate on a battery a lot longer than all those um, computer displays you see. So we, we're all pretty familiar with, you know, our computers not working right one day and or your power going out in your house. And if you had nothing but digital clocks and your power went out, well, you wouldn't be able to tell the time. So you still have a backup system for when the power goes out? Essentially, yes. Martinsburg ground, aircraft 0532, spot red one radio check. Martinsburg ground, aircraft 0532, spot red one, radio check. See, what he's trying to do right now is he's trying to make contact with ground personnel. That way, if we were starting the APU, which is the auxiliary power unit, if it were to catch on fire or have an emergency with that, that, that way we call them, let them know the emergency that's happening, tell them what spot we're on, location of us, how many people are on board. That way they know who to look for when they're coming. And what we normally use is the backup radio, which is right here, if the normal radios right here are not powered on, which sometimes they're not when you first come on the airplane. Are you, you're talking about uh, the fire and ground crew? Normally we're talking about people up in the tower right there. Okay. They're going to notify the fire department, which is right beside us right there. So when we say ground, that's normally who we're, who we're talking about, okay. people Control. up in the tower. APU fire, fire number one engine, fire number two engine, fire number three engine, fire number four engine, APU fire. So I'm going to guess the only time you ever want to hear that is when they're doing this test. Correct. <laughs> That's a good, good guess. right here does is if you look outside you'll see the power cart and what this does is when it's in the off position that means there's no power coming onto the airplane so you'll see all these panels and instruments just turned on so when you take the switch to on that allows power to come onto the airplane and that powers all the instruments and uh, MCDs down here so really the way the way to think about it is this plane as it's sitting here is like your car in a parking in the driveway Right. If it's not turned on, there's no power. Yep. There's so you have to have a card outside that sends power into it. Exactly. Otherwise, you have to turn the, the plane on just to work in here. Exactly. Yep. Now without the engines running. So you got the, the battery, which is what they're testing all the emergency systems with when they first do their pre-flight. Uh, you got the external power part, which is what we're on right now. And you also have the APU that he's talking about, the auxiliary power unit, which is basically a smaller engine that is capable to power all the electrical systems while this airplane is on the ground. Um, we use that to start engines because it also has air. We need airflow to start the, um, the, the, the main engines. 
once we get those engines started, we shut the auxiliary power unit down, and we don't fly with that thing. Right so, so the auxiliary power engine you don't see; it's in the belly of the plane. It's, it's in the right gear well over here. Okay. Now, as a pilot, everything they're doing here, you have to know as well, right? Correct. Yeah, we the pilots can do this free flight as well. Um, and normally, the load masters do it because they're the first ones out to the airplane, and they need power to run their um, their ramp and stuff back there. Like if they were going to operate the ramp, um, they would put on the, uh, the APU so they have hydraulic power to operate the ramp with. Okay. Um, flying, so is good. But normally, they come out here because they're loading cargo. Um, they're getting the airplane ready for. Um, passengers, they're doing a lot of stuff while we're still inside mission planning for our flight. So to get to get power on the airplane and be able to operate the cargo doors and start loading while we're still inside doing mission planning, they'll usually do this part. Of so the basically, plane. they're prepping the plane for takeoff, and then you come out real in slow motion. <laughs> Essentially, when you go to get so, on the plane. Yeah, and we also have a pre-flight that we have to do. This is um, where you need your aviator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Standing outside with the scarf blowing. Yes. Um, but we have a pre-flight that we have to do as well, and we it's, it's kind of a more in-depth pre-flight. We check the flight controls. Uh, we're checking. We're, we're setting up our navigation instruments. We're loading flight plans. We're checking the fuel, making sure the weight and balance that they send us up here um, is okay for our takeoff performance data, and that we can get off the ground safely. So a lot. Uh, once they get done with this, they go down and they start working what's called a weight and balance form, and then they upload that into their computer down there at their station send it up to ours, we go over the numbers and verify it because we're constantly checking each other to make sure that everything's safe within the operating limits of the airplane. Okay, so if you have a moment, could you talk about the different instruments that you use during flight and then we can go down and talk about your balance check yep. to see what it means to be balanced on a plane. So to, to add on to him talking about the weight and balance, the one thing I want to show you up here is this tells you the fuel and we can use this that number right there for the fuel, or we can come to the mission computer and we can electronically send it down to our computer, which will automatically input the data onto our um, Form F, which is our load and balance sheet. Get ready. Uh, it was one thing I've learned that it's not like when you when I go to the gas station and I fill up, you know, my pickup truck takes 22 gallons. <laughs> You're not measuring by the gallon or the volume, you're measuring by mass. By pounds, yeah. yes. And that's because uh, everything uh, on an airplane is based off of pounds. We want to know what the airplane weighs, because that's going to, um, the weight is going to determine how long a runway we need to take off, what our rotation speed is going to be, which is the, air, which is the speed that the aircraft pulls off the ground. Okay. Um, weight is a very important number so and that's they, and that's why they're doing a weight and balance check yeah, to make so they'll, sure they'll take our fuel how much fuel we have on board they'll take the cargo whatever the cargo is and all these barkings you see along the airplane all right that, that, that 230 I think is the first one up here and if you go when you go through the cargo compartment you'll see just a couple right there 250 260 as they go all the way back they use those numbers and they'll type in the, they'll type in the weight uh, in correspondence with those numbers in the uh, the computer down there. They can also do it manually, but the computer does it faster. But they have a backup and checklist. They can do it manually as well. Um, but they type all that in, and then it spits back out and tells us what our operating uh, center of gravity is. And it has to be within certain limits or the airplane. Um, if it's too far forward, we won't be able to get it off of the ground. If it's too far aft, then the airplane will rotate too early, and that's whenever you can have a very okay. serious accident. Um, so, obviously we have four main screens down here. We also have two HUDs, that stands for HUD Heads Up Displays. Um, so everything that you see down on this screen right here will also be up in here. Now there's more information that's not displayed on here right now because we don't have certain systems turned on. Um, and we're not gonna, I'm not gonna turn them on because it's, it's gonna get hot out and we'll get a bunch of bells and whistles if it overheats um, without the APU and the air to cool it off. Um, but typically this will come on and you'll see a uh, basically a, 
a blue and a um, brownish color, and that discerns the air, the sky, and the ground, basically. So basically, the, the digital version of this dial here. Yep. So you got, this is our, our analog backup, and then this is a digital display of that, and this display right here is also what pops, pops up in the heads-up display. Um, we have, uh, you're talking about the engines to monitor. So we've got the engine displays right here. Um, it tells us everything we need to know about the engines. It lets us know, it'll, it'll turn red if it's out of limits. You can see all the red um, marks here that lets us know if the engine's operating within limits or not. Um, we'll also get enunciations up on this. This is called the, uh, the WAP or the warning enunciation. Um, and uh, so when you do this, do this light test right here, you can see we get lights in the red handle for, for fire. Um, we've got all these um, smoke and fire enunciations up there. Um, you got the warnings. These things light up and they'll flash and yell at you. Um, now I notice on your screen directly in front of you, you have the green markings. So the green markings are, are your flaps and your... Yeah, so these are all the flight controls. Um, when we do our flight control checks, or if we have a flight control malfunction, a lot of time we'll refer to this screen to see what they're actually doing. Um, we also have a backup, like we do on everything. Um, this will tell us where our flaps are at. This tells us where our gear is at. Um, but we can also back it up, so everything is another one of those uh, redundant systems that uh, you can check and if we're getting you know a bad indication here maybe one of these lights is burned out so we can come over here and say okay well this shows it down we can also have the load masters go down and they have windows down there they can visually look at the gear and um, and visually verify that the gear is down so even if we don't trust these and we're getting bad indications up here the load master can still go down they can see the gear they have lines down their little windows if those lines match up they can say, okay, yeah, the gear is down and locked. And, and the handle for the gear looks like a wheel. Or, it does. Yep. Uh, so to maneuver the plane, what are some of the, the ways to maneuver the plane? First, at first glance, it looks like you have a gas pedal and a brake pedal like a car, but those are not gas and brake pedals. Those are not, those are not gas and brake pedals. Uh, this, is our, this is our gas and, uh, and brake pedal, if you will. This is called the throttle quadrant. Uh, that makes us go, uh, go faster or slower. Um, so uh, these are these are what you're called uh, called your rudders. So the um, the aircraft has three different axes on which it rotates on. Um, the rudders control your vertical axis axis. So if you take a if you take a pole and you put it straight down through the middle of the airplane, the rudders make your aircraft pivot amongst that axis. Left and right. Left and right. Like a boat. Yes. Um, the ailerons make it go along the um, uh, horizontal or your longitudinal longitudinal axis. Um, so if you were taking that same rod and go right through the nose of the aircraft, the ailerons make you spin around that. So axis. roll left so or right. Roll left or right, and then um, the uh, latitudinal. If you take one right through the wings, through the center of the aircraft, and you the uh, forward and aft to make your aircraft pitch up and down. So, and you combine all of those to make the aircraft do coordinated turns and maneuvers. So, so when an airplane is turning, rolling, and pitching at the same time, it means that you're controlling it in three different ways. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, some more some more instruments we use. I talked about the. Uh, this is called our primary flight display. So, this has our altitude over here. It has our airspeed over here. It has our heading, which. We also have our altitude, our airspeed, and this lets us know our pitch. So when you get in the weather, on days like this where it's nice out, we can look out and we can tell if we're flying level. We can tell when we're flying level, if we're gonna climb, if we're gonna turn. When you get in the weather and you're flying in clouds, you can't tell any of that. You have no horizon to- Or at um, night. Or at night, yeah. yes, at night uh, as well. Um, so we use this interest, this uh, attitude indicator to let us know when we're in the weather or at night. Um, to let us know if we're turning, if we're climbing, because our our our, um, our ears will play tricks on us and make us think that we're doing things that we're not really doing. And that's how some people have gotten into accidents is by not trusting their instruments and going off of what their um, uh, 
can't think of the term for the, uh, the fluid in your ears. You know yeah. Yes. Uh, sort of like a vertigo. Yeah, vertigo. Thank yes. You. Um, it, it, it gives you an accurate representation of what's actually going on. Correct. All right. Um, well, as a certified scuba diver, we experience the same thing. I mean, when you're underwater, you can get to the point where you don't see surface, you don't see the ocean floor, and you're not sure which way is up. And if there's an emergency, well, then you have to use your equipment, your dive computer, to know what to do. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, so very similar. Um, we have, uh, this is what's called a nav display. Um, this is what tells us, uh, when we put our flight plan in the, in the mission computer up here, we'll get a purple line, and that shows us where we're going. We can check and make sure that um, uh, all the points are correct and we don't uh, just that we're on the correct course and, and, and heading in. So when you're flying you're just not out freely flying you have to follow a set course that is reported to correct yeah we're we're talking to uh, as they were like they were talking about talking to checking in with ground uh, air traffic control uh, we're talking to tower we're talking to air traffic controllers all over the the world and we have a filed flight plan and we said we're going from point A to point B via this route and uh, air traffic control is expecting us to fly that route. And if we don't fly that route, they're going to ask us where we're going, um, especially when you get overseas into different countries. We have to have diplomatic clearances to fly over top of those countries. So if you're not flying your route and you fly over a country that you're not cleared to, then uh, you Yeah, then, then something's probably wrong yeah. or something's going to be wrong. Yeah, we're going to have to answer a lot of questions. Yes. All right. Okay. No problem. Um, this up here is our autopilot, so this is what makes our job a lot easier. Um, this controls everything from um, our altitude to our airspeed to our heading, um, how we're, what mode, what navigation mode we're flying in. Um, so this tells us to fly, if we want to fly in heading mode, we just put in a heading in here and it'll fly whatever heading we throw in here. If we're flying our mission computer line, our flight plan, we'll put the, we'll put it in mission and we'll just hit LNAV and it'll fly that mission all the way to the to our destination airfield. Um, and this is the uh, autopilot and throttles, and then this, this, these are the, the throttles will fly whatever airspeed you, you throw in here. Um, so this, we do, we, we take off and we land manually. But once we once we get airborne, um, we'll flip on the autopilot and auto throttles, and that just it makes our job a lot easier, and it makes us be able to um, uh, focus on other things. And because you're you're not just flying, you know, a thirty minute flight. I mean these these flights can go halfway around the nine, world, eight, right? Nine ten hour flights, and um, it, it uh, flying that all by hand would be exhausting. Um, you know, you can't just, uh, it's like a car where if you're tired, you just pull over and, and take a nap. So, um, you know, having another pilot and multiple pilots up here help you uh, stay rested and, and, and be able to land the aircraft whenever you get to your destination. Now, one thing that we, we sometimes teach is flight simulator. Have you ever experienced a flight simulator? And how real is a flight simulator compared to your experience as a true pilot? Um, the flight simulator we have here is, is very good. It's very realistic. Um, you know, other other than the fact that, you know, you're looking at a, a big computer screen out front, um, everything else inside the aircraft is identical to how this aircraft is. Um, the, the simulator instructor will, it's, that's how we practice all of our emergencies. You don't want to be practicing emergencies in an airplane. So, so the benefit of that technology is you're in a safe environment. You're in a safe environment. If you, if you mess up an emergency procedure in the simulator, nobody gets hurt. If you mess up an emergency procedure in an airplane, you know, you could lose the airplane and everybody on board the airplane. So um, it's, it's a much safer training environment. Um, and hopefully it prepares us for if, if we ever encounter something like that in a real airplane, we'll know how to correctly handle it. So your education never stops? Correct. Yes. That's important. Education never stops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're always, we're always training. Um, you know, that's the, that's the purpose of the simulator is um, they will, they'll 
they'll kill all four engines on us and make us figure out how to get the aircraft on the, apply the proper procedures and get the aircraft on the ground safely. Um, so that if that ever happens to us in the actual airplane, we'll know how to handle it. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, we like to thank you for your time. Uh, the, the, you know, the more you guys support Starbase, uh, the more you know education. Education never stops. The more education we can pass on to our students, uh, and hopefully they may want to become a, a pilot, whether it's commercial pilot or uh, Air Force pilot one day. Uh, the way to go is is just stick with it and, and learn, learn, learn. All right, and thank you. Yeah, no problem. Right. Thanks, for, uh, thanks for taking the time out to come out and see what we do. Okay. It was the landing gear, the windows. I don't know if you want to point that out. The auxiliary okay. engine. Um, what else would be technology? Oh, the, the numbers. Okay, yes, yeah, so we yeah. are. Rolling. All right, so let's talk about the weight and balance of the plane. Okay, so uh, we're here at the forward load master station. Right here, we have this laptop computer. It's an air crew data transfer device. We can take our cargo payload and we upload it into this chart right here. And the plane will automatically calculate the weight and balance. It'll take into account our fuel load, passengers, cargo, and various other factors to make sure that the aircraft's center of gravity is within a specified envelope. If you take this pencil, for example, you can balance it if I can get it to do it. So it's not an easy task. It takes a little bit of thinking, but if you think of the plane as this pencil, you want to keep all the weight as close to the center of it as possible. If you put it too far towards the back, it starts to tilt. So that's our job, is to make sure that the aircraft is as well balanced as possible. So your job is a loadmaster, correct? Correct. Okay. So a really awesome thing that our computer does is if you look down there at the bottom, you see all the yellow? That'll tell you that the plane is not in balance right now. So the computer pretty much does everything for us. We just have to plug in the weights and stations of the, uh, the cargo. And if it's in balance, those yellow bars will not be highlighted and it'll all be, all be clear and white. And that'll tell us that the plane is balanced and good to go. Very good. But in the scenario that the computer didn't work, um, which has happened, at least to myself a few times. Uh, we still have to know how to do it the old school way with um, pen and paper and just math. So, so you have to know math. So just like up in the, in the uh, flight deck, the pilot uses the electronic, but if the electronic goes, electronics go out, you still have to know how to read the analog dials. So you guys use technology, but if it's not always available, you still have to know how to do it the, the old way. So exactly. you have to know the math. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. And another cool thing is if, if for whatever reason we don't remember a formula or whatnot, we go into the iPad and all of our formulas and, and uh, weight balance information is all in there, so we can copy that down and transcribe it onto paper. All right. So let's take a walk down the car compartment here. So you see some other load masters are loading a pickup truck here uh, for some training. So say we were about to go fly with that pickup truck. Say they had it parked back here. And the center of balance was at flight station 500. If you look up on the wall, on top of the walls here, you see numbers. Uh, we use those for weight and balance. So we will take the center of the item and wherever that is on the wall, we'll multiply the weight by that number, and that gives us moments. So basically, it's how far away from the center of the aircraft the load is. So we want to keep it as close to the center as possible. Yeah, what else? What, what am I missing? Anything else that might be unique? 
So the, the parking part is split up into four different sections. We got, if I can remember my uh, alphabet, E, D, E, F, and G. So D is where we're standing right now. E would be in the middle of the car compartment, F would be right before the ramp, and the G is on the ramp. And each individual section has got different weights to it. So right here we're standing, we can put 72,000 pounds in the middle of the car compartment, which is the max load of C-17, which is 170,900 pounds we can fit on there. And just before the ramp, we can fit 35,000 pounds. And then on the ramp, we can carry 40,000 pounds. But if we actually take a walk back in here, I'll show you. window right here, if we were to have to manually uh, release the gears down to verify that the gears are locked, there's two uh, red bars down there that we just make sure are in line, and that'll tell us the gears are locked. So, if you look right in there, you'll see a red bar right in front of my finger. Go up a little bit. Kind of hard to see, but uh, there's a little red line out there, and that'll verify that the gear is locked and down in case we have an emergency. We have an oven here in case we get hungry. We got a hot cup down here and a coffee maker up in here. That way, if we all want coffee on a long trip, we can make it. So where's your flight attendant? We're in. Oh, you're in. We're in. You have to know more than just loading the plane. A little bit. You got to know how to go. Yeah, we, we got to keep them happy. We got to know how to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. All right. We can talk about uh, how they're about to. The... So, what they're doing right now is looking for. They're looking for good places to tie the truck down, usually to the axle or the frame. And we calculated our strength for three Gs for forward, two and a half for aft. Backwards. It's uh, three G's forward, two G's vertical, That's right. and uh, one and a half for uh, lateral and aft. What he said. So you're talking about gravitational yep. force. Yep. Yes. So normally the, the gravitational forces are, are, are larger when we're landing. We're putting more pressure on the brakes. Taking off, it's not too bad. Um, and then when we when we actually put restraint on the vehicles, we have to calculate that. So what we normally do to calculate it is we would measure the length of the chain versus how far it is from the actual point it's attached to the device on the floor. And then we would multiply that together and divide it. And that would give us the actual restraint that we're getting out of the chain. And we were talking about in the uh, flight deck, we were talking about always learning, always learning. Education never stops. So the gentlemen that are actually loading the plane are training, right? Correct. They're doing training. They're doing training not just for uh, Army student load masters, but also um, aerial corps. Uh, which is the section that weighs all the cargo uh, and figures out how much our cargo weighs and where the center of gravity for that cargo is. They're training on how to load that cargo and fast strap it down as well. So kind of two different shops um, all getting training here at the same time. The collaboration. Exactly. A lot of collaboration in order to make a, a plane fly. Yeah. Big, big team effort. So for an example, we can say this pickup truck weighs 5,000 pounds. So our forward restraint requirement for that would be 15,000 pounds. So to prevent the truck from coming forward, we would need X amount of chains on the back of it. And the total restraint of those chains would have to add up to 15,000. Um, vertical, well, we would need 10,000 pounds of restraint, so uh, basically we'd measure how much vertical restraint all the chains around the vehicle are giving us. Um, aft and lateral is the same thing in a, in a different direction. Um, you just want to ensure that the piece of cargo is not going to shift uh, if the pilots were to make a uh, more drastic maneuver. It's a lot of it.
What else? What else can we talk about here? Talk about how cross and whatnot. Why? Why they do cross so instead of just straight out? You get more, more strength you know, for different directions. So, what our, what our fellow loadmaster John had ahead them do is they were originally putting the chain straight out, which you're only going to get after straight out of that if you're coming straight out. But when you cross them, you get lateral, you get aft, and you do get vertical out of those as well. that you can haul on, on a C-17? So we can pretty much haul almost anything. Uh, the plane was actually built around a uh, Abrams tank to, to be able to carry that and one of those. And to carry one of those, we, we use every single chain in the car department would be used to tie it down. Um, but we can carry anything from little Polaris RZRs to semi-trucks to boats. Other, other smaller airplanes. Now you say it was designed around the Abrams tank. Uh, you could probably fit two in here, but you can only carry one because of the, the weight. They weigh about 130, 135,000, correct? Okay. Talking about the little the, the, the beach the beach boats. This is this LS, the little LSD. No, this is uh this is something different. It was massive, and it went from the very back part of the cargo compartment all the way up to the front there. There's no room whatsoever. It's basically a really big patrol boat. Is, is what that is. Okay. When I was in the Navy. I was assigned to a salt craft, and they were the boats that let you pull up on the beach and drop the, the front gate. Right. Now, it's, it's the uh, the Navy SEAL ones that they, they go out and patrol. Yeah, like the, the Navy Special Boat Teams. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. Uh, it's like, I think the old one was like the Mark V. I don't know what the new one's called. Was it one of the hovers? Hmm. No. That'd be cool. I think you need a win. <laughs> Get her out. So other than carrying cargo, uh, such as vehicles, what else can the plane be used for? So we can also carry pallets, um, and then we can also do aeromedical evacuation missions that we use the litter stations for. So we'll be carrying patients out of uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, places like that where they've been injured, or uh, psychiatrically, psychiatric patients, we'll take those out as well. And we can carry these attached to the floor right here, We'll attach them there, and we can we can fit multiple on each side of the airplane. That way, we can carry multiple different patients, and three patients can fit on one litter. So basically, it's like a flying hospital. Right, exactly. And we'll have we'll have uh, flight docs and other air medical evacuation personnel on there that can take care of the patients. Okay. Now, we just watched the uh, pull a truck into the bay, but what if there was something that was not mobile and you had to get it up into the cargo area? So if, if we're carrying a truck that the engine's inoperative or whatnot, we can put it in neutral and pull it up, or if we've got a generator or something, we can also attach a chain to that and pull that up. And under here we have our winch, which is what we would attach to the cargo. 
we'd attach this, we'd attach a chain bridle is what we would make first. Normally, unless it has a pinnel hook that we can attach this straight to, and we would be able to pull it straight up into the car compartment. If it was a uh, very heavy piece of equipment, uh, we can actually create a uh, pulley system using the uh, wheel cables. So we would attach these to the floor and to the piece of cargo, and we would run the wheel cables through here to multiply the amount of so there, there's the science involved. Exactly. You're, you're using simple tools to fulfill a hard job. Yeah. All right. You, did you fly C-17s or C-5s? I did, yeah. What, what about before that? Anything else? For what? What's the question? Any, what else have you flown? Oh, man. Uh, do you fly a commercial? I do. Or United. Okay, let's put it. Let's put a United in there. Uh, <laughs> they'll love that, won't they? Uh, so, which, which, all right. So, huh? You want to ask him first? I'll ask first. Okay. Right. So, other than the C-17, what other other aircraft have you flown on? Uh, personally, I haven't flown on any other aircraft um, aside from commercial airplanes like 747s and air, aircraft like that. Um, I've been on C5s and uh, C130s, but I've never flown in one. Um, okay. So besides me, what was the most interesting thing you've seen on this aircraft? So personally, I like uh, loading helicopters. I think it's pretty fun. We get, we get to utilize the winch, um, and it's it's somewhat challenging to tie down as well. We got to get into our EPUBs and look through there, find out exactly where the tie tie down points are, and. Uh, use that as a reference for it, but helicopter is probably my favorite thing to carry. Helicopter, okay. So you're the pilot. What was the most interesting thing that you flown? Oh man, I've flown everything from uh, helicopters to, uh, you know, space equipment for NASA. So um, that, that was back in the C-5 days, you know, I flew the C-5 as well. Um, but we did some interesting missions just because of the capability for it to get unique cargo on and off in different places. A little bit larger. Um, a little bit larger, little bit yeah. Larger. yeah. Um, but uh, tanks, I flew tanks, um, you know, naval, naval equipment, boats, um, just pretty much anything you can think of, we've, we've carried it on a C5 or C17. So that, that's what you carry. What, what was some uh, other aircraft you have actually flown yourself? Uh, so I've flown. The, uh, all, all the trainers, the T6, T1, I flew the C5, C17 now, um, 737 for United. Um, I started out in Cessna 172s. Um, I think it's I think it's probably about it. Okay, so you, you fly for United? I do. Okay. Yeah. So I can get a special privilege, like first class. Maybe, maybe not right now with everything that's going on, okay. but uh, you know, when, when everything calms down, we'll, we'll look into okay, that. we'll look into that. Yeah. What are right. the most interesting things that you have seen on this plane? Oh uh, well, I think the most interesting thing that I've seen so far was definitely a, um, it was a Navy Special Warfare boat. Um, so basically, it was a boat about as wide as the cargo compartment here. Uh, being pulled on a trailer by a uh, semi truck, and it took up every inch of cargo space we had from that black line right there all the way back to the end of the cargo ramp. It was massive. Um, the trailer actually articulated in the middle, so we didn't hit the uh, wind box structure up there. Um, I said it, it's the largest piece of cargo that I've loaded, um, it's probably one of the most challenging and fun. Alright, very cool. Okay, and so that was our tour for the C-17 here at the West Virginia Air National Guard 167th Airlift Wing in Martinsburg. And I'd like to thank our crew, our flight crew, for taking us on this little tour. And uh, we'll see you next week.